Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the OU Innovation Hub Fab Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to safely use our saw stop table saw. Table saws are used for rip cuts and cross cuts, pretty much. A rip cut is any cut that goes with the grain of the wood. A cross cut is any cut that goes across the grain of the wood. Now, if it's a short cross cut or anything like that, you'll probably want to use the miter saw over there, although not necessarily. We have some sleds and things that you can use that are really, really handy, and I'll show you how to use those as well. We just want you to be safe and get good quality cuts with all the stuff in here. So here on the front of the saw, we've got the master power switch and the on-off paddle switch. If these lights down here are dark, then flip the master power switch on. While the system initializes, it'll be blinking red. Once it's ready to go, it'll be solid green. Pull to turn it on, push to turn it off. You can either hit it with your hand or your thigh. Uh, it's pretty handy. Anytime the blade is spinning, do not touch it because you will get hurt and you will destroy the brake and the blade. One cool little trick though, is you can test your material to see if it's going to trigger the brake before you even start the saw. For instance, if I were to touch this with my finger, you can see that that would activate the brake. A lot of times, if you try to put wet wood or anything else semi-conductive in this, it's going to trigger the brake. So it's always a good idea to touch your material to the side of the blade before you run it through, just to make sure that it's not going to trigger anything. So like this wood here, see, nothing, just fine. So, the other two controls, other than the on-off switch that you're probably going to be messing with on the front, are the blade height, counterclockwise to lower, clockwise to raise. Over here on the left-hand side of the saw is the tilt. You read the angle of the tilt off this front gauge here, and always make sure to return it back to zero when you're done, please, for the next guy. If the fence is on the right side of the blade, you use the right-hand scale, and vice versa. But once you set it where you want, let's say six inches, make sure to lock it down, and then adjust your blade height so that it's not sticking so far up above the piece. You want it to stick up just a little bit. Otherwise, that's just asking for trouble. So I'll set it about there. Now, anytime I'm going to be anywhere near this blade, you always want to use push blocks or push sticks to push your piece through to keep your hands well clear of the blade. And make sure to always keep it up against the fence because if it comes off the fence, you won't get a straight cut and you could get the piece kicking back. And that could be very, very bad. So just always keep it in good contact and push all the way through and never try to reach across the blade to recover your piece while the blade is still spinning. Let it spin down and then go around and get your piece. A couple little things to watch out for. I've done this a couple times. As I'm adjusting my fence, I'll have my hand accidentally here in the T-slot and I'll move it and pinch my fingers really, really bad. So keep your fingers well clear of these T-slots as you go to slide your rip fence. Now sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do small cross cuts and a fence simply is not appropriate. In that case, use these little sleds here. We have this small one, or we have a really large one for larger pieces. Put it on the left-hand side for 90-degree cuts. Put it in the right-hand slot for miters. It's got a little piece of wood here on the bottom that fits into the T-slot. And this makes sure that you get nice, straight, perpendicular cuts. Just make sure your piece is all the way up against the back of the sled, and the blade will pass right at the edge of the sled so you know exactly where the cut will be. This prevents kickback because the piece rides with the table in this case. Instead of sliding the piece across the table, the table essentially moves with the piece. Of course, you'll have to compensate the blade height for the height of this, but you just run it all the way through and you can go ahead and pull it back. Shut down the saw before you grab the offcut, of course. You could also clamp another piece of wood as a stop block to the back of the sled and this gives you the ability to make repeated cuts that are exactly the same length. This is one of the great things about using sleds. Kickback occurs when a piece gets caught in the blade and is thrown back at you. It can be very, very dangerous. And a sled helps keep this possibility to a minimum. I recommend you use sleds anytime you want to make a cross cut. It makes a very good quality cut and it's much, much safer. The large sled can only be used for 90 degree cuts. The small sled though can be used for 45 degree cuts if you place the sled on the right side of the blade. The large sled goes on the saw 
with the thinner tapered fence up front. And the blade comes up through this slot here in the bottom of the sled. Now one time the sled was put in here backwards and you can see that the blade started to cut a second slot. Make sure you push your workpiece all the way through and watch out for the blade as it comes through the back of the sled. Make sure you keep your fingers well away from that slot. But the slot tells you exactly where the blade's going to be. Anytime you've got more wood sticking out here than you have up against the fence, you must use the sled. And it's going to want to snag and it's going to try to do this and it's going to kick back and you could easily trigger the brake if you get too close to it. If you trigger the brake, you must immediately tell a staff member, we will charge you $150 to replace the brake if you accidentally trigger it. And then you may not use the loud room until you've spoken to one of the directors. Well, that's pretty much all there is to the table saw. It's not that intimidating. You can definitely do it. Just use basic safety, which includes safety glasses, and always keep your hands away from the blade. And if you ever have any question about something, please ask. You will not look stupid for asking. In fact, you'll look very intelligent. You will look stupid for messing something up or hurting yourself. Go ahead and subscribe so you can stay updated with all the different things we've got going on all around here. We've got basic safety training videos online now, and pretty soon we're going to have a bunch of tips and tricks that'll make you a whole lot better at making stuff. So please subscribe if you find this useful. I'm Mike Thompson, coming to you from the Fab Lab. What do you want to make?